the money now. <laughs> Kofi is the leading cash crypt in Uganda, earning the country over 555 million US dollars, which is about 2 trillion shillings a year, according to trade statistics of 2017. The country currently exports about 4 million bags of coffee per year, but has launched a plan to export 20 million bags in the next five years. It is for this reason that many farmers have been encouraged to grow more coffee, and programs such as Operation Wealth Creation have been established to support the drive. As much as there are many farmers, there are also many students and people seeking knowledge about coffee. Recently, a group of 30 students from six African countries gathered at Rijeo Farm in Wakiso District to learn and share knowledge on the best practices and challenges faced by coffee farmers and other players along the value chain. The students, who are mainly company and organization heads under the Swedish Institute Management Program Africa, were drawn from Ethiopia, Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda and Zambia. At the farm, they were received by Robert Kapshenga, an avid coffee farmer who guided them through a tour, explaining the best practices and challenges faced by coffee farmers. Our farm, our farm is called Rujeo Farm. Thank you. We have approximately 50 acres of coffee. Uh, so this farm is mainly around, and I'll explain some of the logistics, some of the, the ra business rationale. So I started this from scratch, although I come from a, a, a coffee and tea background. So my maternal grandfather was a big coffee farmer, my, my paternal grandfather was a big tea farmer. So I, begin, so I bought this land. Uh, so this is my business together with my family. So we grow <coughs> coffee and banana, and there's a logic, there's a very big business logic around it. Because in Uganda we harvest coffee twice a year, so which means you only earn money two times a year. But the needs, the cash needs, the, 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 the financial needs is throughout. is throughout the year. Because you've got to maintain the farm, you've got to spend money on labor, you've got to spend money on pesticides, you've got to regenerate the soil, you've got to deal with uh, weeds and so on. So that <coughs> means that you've got to have a counterpart crop that generates income on a more regular basis. Kabshenga took the students through the stages of planting coffee, starting with which kind of coffee a farmer should plant and how the fields should be prepared. The only problem is if you're doing sun-dried coffee, and I'll explain that later, then it becomes a problem because you don't have enough sunshine to dry the, 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 the coffee, mm -hmm. sunlight, mm -hmm. if you're dependent on sun-dried coffee. Mm -hmm. okay. So... After you've identified the correct or the right planting materials, the other most important thing is something called field preparation. You must make sure that your pits are of a certain dimension and the plants are of a certain distance uh, apart. So you should, the pit should be two feet wide, two feet deep. So two feet wide, two feet deep. Then it should be 10 meters apart in each direction. I'm oh, sorry, 10 feet, not 10 oh, meters, 10 feet. 10 feet. 10 feet apart in <coughs> each direction. Okay. Once you've got the perfect field preparation, the pits have manure, you now wait, and as soon as the first rain comes in, you plant. To have a good harvest, a farmer should have competent employees. It's not possible to say, I will have a policy of gender, and I'll tell you why. In an area like this, the women are also the domestic workers in their homes. 
So if you take her out of her home to come and work here all day, it means that the domestic chores at home are not being attended to. And, and the man is probably wondering where his wife is. So that's challenge number one. So even if you did an affirmative action and say, now nah, spare this number of jobs for women, they just won't be available because of the social dynamics that we have. Secondly, we still have those distortions, social distortions. In a rural area like this, there's the domestic, the home situation is that the man believes he's the breadwinner. So even if the woman wants to work, it's very unlikely that the man will allow her to come and work to pick coffee. Mm -hmm. Why are you getting your own money? You will become unmanageable. Oh, that's the song. Mm -hmm. But for me, the more women I have, the better. Because then if they earn their own income, they are likely to do better with the money at home. The man is more likely to go and drink the money in the trading center. Mm -hmm. So that's where they... they I, I can't, it's not something I can... Even if I wanted to do it, I can't impose it because... Mm -hmm. The society here is, that's what okay. it is. Yeah. In terms of skills development, what have you done? You've talked about a lot of technical know-how in terms of food preparation, uh, probably this post-harvest uh, uh, processes that you need to be careful with. What are you doing in terms of empowering the staff, the workers? Are there any programs that they attend or you specifically recruit with those that already have the skills? So I've recruited people that have skills, uh -huh. but I have also paired them with young people from here mm -hmm. learn how to spray learn how to we pick coffee learn how to treat the plant mm -hmm. one of our biggest problems you probably saw fires burning as you are walking along mm -hmm. yes. one of our biggest problem is a very small black insect called black coffee tree borer mm -hmm. so it goes into the tree and eats it from inside mm -hmm. yes so what we do is we we cut the branches that are affected and burn them mm -hmm. so those skills are being passed on by the specialized people so i have three fully trained coffee guys here okay. who, who know what to do and how to manage. They went to school, they worked on a big coffee plantation and then they have six other young people that they work with and are trying to pass on the skills. Okay. Kabshinga gave a vivid demonstration from one of his coffee trees on how much productivity a farmer should get from a single unit. Move the, the, the others and you remain with three. So these three from one tree, you end up with three trees which give you coffee. You can't even go for four. You end up with uh, four, which then give you the productivity of. So this is the minimum unit. From this, your target should be to get. So my target, at least, is to be able to get the highest level of productivity for me. Should be 50 kilograms of what we call green cherries or fresh berries. 50 kilograms. The Ugandan standard is 7 to 8 to 10. I want to get 35 to 50. Now, to do that, you feed the tree with manure and fertilizer and water. So, uh, because you guys want to shade, you stay in the shade, I'll demonstrate what I'm demonstrating using this tree. So, your natural unit is here. Mm. And these branches. So what you should go for as a farmer is to make sure that you have 24 branches on each stem. Mm. 24 branches on each stem. So that's, sorry, 24 joints on each branch. Mm. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. The minimum should be 16. The coffee at his farm is grown alongside a banana plantation. The students were informed that coffee is harvested twice a year. However, according to Kabshinga, the financial needs to maintain the farm are throughout there. Kabshinga says the bananas provide both food security and additional income for food security. Every farmer has good challenges. Some of the major challenges at Rijeo Farm, Kabshinga shared with the students, include fake agriculture inputs, lack of affordable qualified extension workers, and access to markets. Kabshinga says research information should reach the farmers for better management. The Uganda Coffee Development Authority, UCD, estimates that about 500,000 households depend on coffee production. Um, and also a bit therapeutic. It's definitely interesting. Uh, like you said, you use a word, particularly, but I think you've learned so much, especially 
about the coffee in the 